When Pokemon Base Set rolled around, it came with four Steam decks that were introductories to the game. I remember many of us bought those when we were kids, but I don't recall anyone really playing them. I know for a fact most of us took the cards out of them and used them to make our own decks or to write them off our checklist of what we were missing. I've always been curious on what the potential of these decks were, if any. Were they just Steam decks made for some simple gameplay, or was there something amazing to them that went under-noticed? The third construction deck in the order it appears in the rulebook is called Brush Fire. Surprise your opponent by attacking swiftly and fiercely with the fire and grass Pokemon in this Brush Fire deck. So this deck did run two fire and grass type Pokemon, not just one. It has a little list of the cards included. A description saying, the goal of Brush Fire deck is to attack your opponent quickly with the Pokemon that do a lot of damage. We'll be the judge of that. No. The changes help the deck by adding Magmar, a basic Pokemon that can do 50 damage, and Charizard, the King of Fire Pokemon. Oh yeah, I'm sure. An extra plus power helps you do damage even more quickly. And an extra gust of wind makes it harder for your opponent to save his or her Pokemon by retreating them. The Pokemon Trader gets you just the Pokemon you need when you need it. And here at the bottom it shows you what to remove from the deck and what to add to the deck. A minor trait to get the deck an even greater advantage. To start off, the deck came with 18 fire energy cards and 10 grass energy cards, meaning that this was much more focused on fire over grass type Pokemon. For the grass Pokemon, we're taking a look at four Weedles, four Nidoran, and two Tangelas. Not a whole lot. On the fire side, you got four Charmanders, two Charmeleons for them to evolve into, two Growlithe, an Arcanine, two Vulpix, and the hollow of the deck was a Ninetales. You had a assortment of trainer cards, Switch, Gust of Wind, Energy Removal, Plus Power, Last, huge one there, Potion, 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 so you got three potions, Energy Retrieval, and Energy Retrieval. Now when it comes to strategy and complexity of the deck, there really isn't much going on. Starting with the grass again, four Weedles, four Nidorans, two Tangalas. Goal of Brushfire decks to attack your opponent quickly with Pokemon that do a lot of damage. Well, let's see what we got here. Nidoran, 40 HP, Horn Hazard, flip a coin, if Tails attack does nothing, one grass energy for 30 damage, that's actually a lot. But to flip the coin, well, I guess that's the price to pay, no pun. Weedle, 40 HP, Poison Sting, flip a coin, if has any Pokemon is now poisoned, 10 damage, one grass energy. Keep in mind the way poison works in this is that you take 10 damage every time the player's turn ends. Finally, Tangela, 50 HP, First attack is Bind, flip a coin if heads and Pokemon now paralyzed for 20 damage, two energy cards, one colorless. Poison Powder, the defending Pokemon is now poisoned, so it's a guaranteed poison, 20 damage. Going back and forth, you'll be a total 40 damage. Three Gas Energies, that's pretty steep. So three Gas Energies for 20 on the spot, and then a total 40 if it's your turn again. That's kind of feasible, but that's a lot of investment there, like three Grass Energies at a deck that has 10 energies. I don't know if that's really worth it, especially because it's 50 HP to get knocked out pretty easily. So the grass side of things not looking too, too hot, but definitely these two, Nidoran and Weedle. If you get lucky on Nidoran, you can probably do a lot of damage, so at least it's doing that much of the deck description. And on the fire side, once again, four Charmanders, two Charmeleons, two Growlithe, one Arcanine, two Vulpix, and the Ninetales. Starting with Charmander, everyone's little favorite orange salamander. 50 HP, 1 energy card, colorless for scratch 10. 2 energy cards, 1 colorless for ember, discard a fire energy card and attaches Pokemon in order to use the attack, 30 damage. So it's a bit pricey in that you're going to be discarding fire energy cards to use that attack. Alright. You got Charmeleon. 80 HP, so it's beefed up. 3 energy cards, all of them colorless for slash, 30 damage. Flames forward, three energy cards, one colorless, discard a fire energy card in order to use this attack, 50 damage, so that's pretty big, but you are again still losing fire energy cards and you have to do one more fire energy card, not just any energy card. The colorless and slash is really good because I think you just throw your grass energies on that, so it's definitely more of a better investment to use your grass energies on Charmeleon than it is to use on Tangela, sadly. Growlithe, 60 HP, now that's getting really high for something small. 
two energy cards, one colorless, one fire. Flare, 20 damage. Just straightforward. Not as quick, but that 60 HP, hopefully keep it around a little longer. Arcanine, that's pretty big. 100 HP. Three energy cards, one colorless, flames forward. The same thing as Charmeleon, discarded energy card, fire energy card to be specific, to use attack, 50 damage. So it's the same attack as Charmeleon. It's pretty big. And the bigger attack though, two fire energy cards, two colorless, take down, arcane answer. So that's 80 damage it does, but it does 30 damage to itself. That's pretty good, because 80 damage will knock out most Pokemon. And base at one. But 30 damage to yourself, that's probably why it has all those potions in there. Vulpix, 50 HP error because the HP is the other way around. Confuse Ray, flip a coin. If heads the same Pokemon, it's not confused. Two fire energy cards, 10 damage. So that's pretty pricey compared to the other attacks, but that status of confused. I suppose that's a fair trade off. But then at the end, you have to flip for it, so. And finally, the big thing Ninetales. I never noticed that Ninetales was T A L E S. I thought it was T A I L E S. First attack, two energy cards, colorless, both of them. Lore, if your opponent has any bench Pokemon, choose one of them and switch it with the defending Pokemon. So it's like a built-in gust of wind, except your turn's over if you use that. And the big attack here, Fire Blast, four energy cards, all fire energy cards. Same thing as Flamestorm and Ember. Discard a fire energy card in order for nine tails in order to use this attack. 80 damage, to, again, that's pretty huge at the cost of a fire energy card, and it's only fire energy cards, so the grass energy cards won't come useful there. Overall, for the most part, it does seem to do what it's intended to do, which is attack your opponent quickly with Pokemon that do a lot of damage. A big thing to note is that Ninetales, Charmander, Charmeleon, and Arcanine all have pretty high attacks for their stage, but you have to discard an energy card. So it seems like they knew that that was going to be an issue, which is why they included two energy retrieval cards. Also, every deck had potion in them, so that wasn't a surprise, but it seems like a potion was a little more tended to have at least three of them in there because of RK9's ability. Or at least to maybe be a stall out. Because Tangela 50 HP, Growlithe 60 HP, Vulpix 50 HP, you would probably use those to stall out and then use potions to keep healing them until you can power up Charmeleon or Arcanine in order to use those big attacks that involve discarding energy cards. That is pretty much it though, in terms of strategy or complexity of this theme deck, there isn't anything going on other than having maybe, again, Tangela or Growlithe stall out with potions while you power up Charmeleon, Charmander, Ninetales, Arcanine to use those Flamethrower attacks, Ember, and Fire Blast to do some high damage, but you lose energy cards, we have energy retrieval to get them back. Now the little section down here tells you what to remove and add. Remove two bull picks, one nine tails. Ouch, nine tail, that's pretty depressing. Energy removal, switch, and last. So those are two painful. I don't I don't know if you want to remove energy removal and last, but okay. A switch too, that's gonna to be making it harder. But it says to add two Magmars, one Charizard, one Gust of Wind, one plus power, and one Pokemon Trader. So the addition of these cards are supposed to change the deck up a little. It actually kind of does, because it does change what you're prioritizing now. Previously, you want to get Ninetales, Tremelee, and Arcanine powered up, especially to use their Flamethrower attacks and the Fire Blast attack. With this change, you're getting Magmar, which is 50 HP, 2 Fire Energies for Fire Punch, 30 damage. Three energy cards, two fire, one colorless for flamethrower. So it has that same attack that Charmeleon and Arcanine have, but as a basic Pokemon. This means you're most likely going to have Magmar up front more often as your defending Pokemon, along with Growlithe and Tangela, because that high HP and that high attack. While in the back, instead of powering up just Arcanine and Ninetales, you're most likely going to be wanting to power up Charizard. So it does require four energy cards, and that's thing with Charizard's Pokemon Power, Energy Burn. It turns any energy card attached to it into a fire energy card. So you can use grass on that too and charge up that 100 attack power. But fire spin does cost two energy cards with this card, which means the energy retrievals are even more valuable now. And to keep your active Pokemon stalling out, you're going to be relying more on potions. Well, based on what's in there before and after, it does let you uh, attack quickly with Pokemon that do a lot of damage, for the most part. But with the recommendation remove and add, it does change the dynamic of the deck, where it goes from doing those quick attacks to powering up Charizard or Arcanine to use those big attacks. 
and that would be the strategy of the brush fire deck out of the box or with the added changes.